Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we will learn about some processes in SOA 12C with simple demo. We will learn about type of sub processes and how we can implement each of them in your SOA service. So this extension to people was introduced in 12C version to promote code reusability. The sub process is nothing but a fragment of people code that can be reused within a particular processor. The most common benefits of using a sub processor are Code reusability of Beeple process, which reduces the need to create the same activities multiple times to perform the same task. And also code modularity, which is a general programming concept that involves separating a program's function into an independent piece. And also, in case there is a need to change the logic uh, of our processor, then maintaining code at one sub process is much easier than maintaining code at multiple places with Beeple process. So as of now, there are two types of sub processes in SOA 12C, inline and standalone. The main difference between them is that inline sub process is used within one Beeple process. However, a standalone sub process can be used in multiple Beeples within one composite. I will explain them in detail and how each type works during our demo. So before we start with the demo, let's look at some of the main limitations of subprocessors. Subprocessors are only supported with Beeple version 2.0. So there is no support with the Beeple version 1.1. Also correlation sets are not supported. So if you create a correlation set in a subprocess, it fails during runtime and sub processes are only shared within one composite so they cannot be shared between multiple composites after this much needed theoretical knowledge let's jump on to our first practical demo with a simple example so as we can see on our screen we have a blank application sub process people application and let's create our first project here and let's call this project name as inline sub process demo let's create it as an empty composite so idea of this particular uh, project will be that we will get a name and age from the user then we'll write a logic in our people where we will check if age is uh, greater than or equal to 18 then it's a valid user and if not then it's an invalid user so for example a licensing service right so let's create a schema first All right, so our uh, schema is created as we can see input element we have name age and output element we have result and as I said we'll create a logic based on age and we will try to make that logic as an inline sub process. So first of all let's create a Beeple process. Let's make it as a synchronous type input as an input element and output will be the output element so now this receive input will receive name and age and this reply output will reply whatever we would want to reply so as of now let's complete our logic so our logic will be we're checking age so let's just say we want to check age with xpath expression and we here we want to say if age is greater than equal to 18 
then it's a valid user that user can apply uh, for voters id card or whatever let's click on ok we can give a la label as valid and invalid now we can assign let's say assign output so if the condition is satisfied then we want to say that this user is valid and in case of invalid we can copy this and we can paste into here so that we don't have to drag and drop a sign one more time and we can update this is invalid so till now we haven't done anything new right it seems like a simple uh, people process which checks checks the age and returns valid or invalid uh, output but now imagine that this is not this service and business logic is not as simple as we are checking in this demo it's a complex logic and this uh, function where we are checking the age is being used throughout the people process multiple times and rather than copying this here we can copy this paste it anywhere we want in the people process rather than doing this we want to extract this logic to a sub process and we can call that logic from wherever we want within this people for that we use inline sub process it's very very easy to uh, create what we'll need to do is we'll create a, a scope so we'll copy this scope content we can give a name to this scope whatever we want inline sub processor scope and we can whatever we want our logic to be in the inline sub process we can drag and drop that logic within that uh, scope and you right click on the scope and you say convert to a sub process so once you click here you'll get an option that what you want the name of that inline sub process you can change the name like this so inline sub process and replace scope with sub process call so that means the moment we click on ok uh, the scope will change with a call uh, component and call will be calling to this inline sub process so let's see how it looks we'll click on ok save we can change this call name also call inline sub process and if you double click on this you'll see that it is calling inline sub process at the moment right so now you cannot see your logic here if you double click on it you check here there is no logic it's just a call and call is happening to inline sub process so in case you want to change or update something in the logic that you wrote in your inline sub process if you come here on the top you'll see under the main process we have a sub process in line if you select this it's a different logic altogether right it's like a within people you have this hidden logic you can update anything you want and it will be updated to everywhere wherever this inline sub process is being called right now if you if this flow is huge and you need to call this logic from somewhere else or as well under the component if you simply search your sub process name you can see here you'll see inline sub process so now it is coming as a sub process component 
so if you drag and drop this anywhere you want it will again call the same sub process so that's how you can use this inline sub process logic multiple times within the same people without writing the whole logic again that's the main use of your inline sub process so let's test it let's deploy it test it and let's see how it looks All right, deployment is finished. Let's, let's go to the enterprise manager and test this service. All right, as we can see, it is deployed in line sub process demo. Let's test it. It will take a name and age of that person. Let's give James, uh, let's say 22. We'll test this service and James is valid. Uh, if we check the flow, if you can see, we have people, we call people. We, once we check the flow, we'll see that there is a call to inline sub process. If we click on it, we should see that it started and completed. So execution started, execution completed within the same second because we don't have much logic into it. And here it says inline sub process and it's checked for the age and it returns the output. Similarly, just let's just check the negative test case as well so if j so 17 we get is invalid so as we can see inline sub process is a very very simple concept but it can definitely come in handy for for huge people processes and when, whenever there is like a common logic for example you need to get a token uh, or an authentication from an api so rather than uh having the whole logic multiple times in people you can simply put that logic in a scope and and uh, convert that scope into an inline process however the logic for standalone process sub process is a bit different and a bit more complex than what we just learned so and it will take a little bit of time for me to explain uh some concepts of that like copy by value copy by reference and all those things which we need to use in standalone uh sub process so i will create a separate video for that just after this one so stay tuned after this video probably in a week or two that video will also be uploaded on the channel for for standalone uh sub process so thank you so much for your time. Stay tuned. It's a very important concept uh, for a SOA developer. Have a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.